In this video, we're going to discuss how you can manage your DNP3 device profiles and your IEC 61850 to DNP3 mapping files using DNP3 Forge. DNP3 Forge is a free tool to manage these functions, but also has a couple of add-ons to provide even more functionality. For example, scripting and the ability to export CSV files. So here I have DNP3 Forge. And the first thing I'm going to do is show how to create and edit a DNP3 XML device profile. To create a new file, we go to File, New File, and we can choose uh, the device profile from January 2010 or from July 2012. Let's take the latest approved one, the July 2012, and it opens up a profile. Now within the tree here, I can click on any value and get more information over in the Properties pane. If I drill down to the lowest level, then I get a property grid where I can fill out the information. So in this case, I'm creating an outstation profile. I can specify the vendor name, the device name, hardware version, software version, and so forth. So let's go make a few changes. So maybe we want to change the data link layer address. This would be a really bad idea in practice, but I am going to fix my data link layer address at four. And I'm going to never validate addresses. So I can continue on making changes like this. At each phase, notice when I make a change, and I click on the value to change it. I have the property grid over here where I can set the capabilities, I can set the current value, and down here we have a description field that indicates the purpose of this field and indicates a reference to the Triangle Microworks source code library and the TriangleMicroworks.net source code library uh, to show where this value is set in the library. So as you create your device profile, you get pointers of where to make the corresponding changes in the source code library. And let's go down and create a few points. I can come to, say, the binary points, right-click on data points and add a data point. And I can fill in over here, point index, name, description. I can add another point. And so forth. Let's come down and create a few analog input points as well. So now let's take a look at how we can map between 61850 and the NP3. To do that, I'll open an ICD file. So I say file, open file, and load my ICD file. Mapping is easily accomplished by drag and drop, but that's easier if I can see both my ICD file and the device profile at the same time. So I can grab the ICD file and rearrange my display so that the DNP device profile and the ICD file are side by side. So now I can expand down into my ICD file and find the point I want to map. So for example, let's look at the phase A current. Since I am mapping this point, I want it to be required, so I will click this checkbox, and then I can just drag the point and drop it on my analog value. Edit mapping dialog pops up and lets me verify the mapping and shows me what rule is being used. So that mapped the value. I can also require the quality and time and map them as well. And of course I would do the same thing to map the phase voltage. And I will put them on analog one. As you can see, it's very
very easy to map points by drag and drop. I'm going to save this file. Then I'll close it and show another way to create device mappings. So here I have the same ICD file I was working with before, and notice I still have checked the values that are required to map. I'm just going to go to Tools, Create New Device Profile by mapping selected IEC 61850 attributes, and it creates the new mapped file. I go look at my points list, look at my analog points, see that it's created analog 0 and analog 1. Shows the points over here. Point name and fills in the description what point it was mapped from in 61850. Now I'm going to save this file. and move on to show some additional features of DNP3 Forge. I'm going to go to the Tools menu and select the Validation and Test window. This window demonstrates scripting capability of DNP3 Forge. DNP3 Forge allows you to customize it using Python scripts and includes some predefined scripts to do DNP3 level capability validation. So for example, if I want to take the device profile I just created and validate it against level four, see in red, any uh, errors for items that are not supported. In orange are places where the device generates responses that are not part of the subset. And then in blue, it shows additional responses that are created that are not part of the subset. But that's okay because there is the capability to configure to only return responses that are within the subset. I can create my own scripts by clicking the green plus button and adding a new Python script here. I can also compare device profiles. So let me open up the first profile that I saved off. I can go to Tools, Compare DNP3 Device Profile Documents. Going to compare map one to map two. And these yellow circles indicate area where there are differences. So if we drill down, remember I made changes in the data link layer. I had it fixed at four. Turned off address capabilities. So those differences are showing. If I want to set it back, match them up and then hit apply. Now they match and notice the yellow circle went away. If we drill down and look at the points list, we see the primary difference in the points is that the automatically created file included a description describing where the points were mapped from. DNP3 Forge also has the ability to display the device profile in human readable format. To do that, we go to Tools, View DNP3 Device Document, and it will run the XSLT and provide us the profile that looks like the old document generated device profiles. This is very nice for providing a human readable format, uh, for example, to include in a request for proposal or in a response to a proposal to indicate the capabilities of your device. Another feature of DNP3 Forge is the ability to export CSV files. This is one of the optional features of Forge. To do that, I go Tools, Export Mappings, or Export Data Points to a CSV file. I'm going to export all my points. I get the ability to define the format of the CSV file. When I say OK, it will create the export, and I'm going to save this off as an exported file.
Now I have a workspace in the test harness that's designed to read that file, so if I launch my test harness, workspace configure master from the CSV file. Look in the data window, we see that no points are configured. I'm going to go to the command window and read the configuration from the CSV file. Browse to the file I just saved off. And now we see the data window updates, and I have the points that I created from that mapping. And notice that the description that was in the mapping file comes through and is shown in the description of the test harness. So I hope you found that useful. Once again, DNP3 Forge is a free tool that's available to manage your DNP3 XML device profiles, as well as to manage DNP3 to 61850 mapping files. And then it has the optional components to add additional features through scripting, such as the ability to validate a file or the ability to compare to device profiles. And it has another optional feature to import and export CSV files. Please feel free to contact us if you have any additional questions. For sales questions, contact sales at trianglemicroworks.com. For technical questions, contact support at trianglemicroworks.com. Thank you, and we look forward to hearing from you.